What's up? Today I have for you a tour of my home. We have an older scamp tour video that's still good with lots of good information, but after living in this thing full time for six months, we now know things a bit better. So this is an updated tour of our 1988 scamp trailer. When you first walk in the door, we've got our guest house on the right. It's a tiny little bench for seating, for holding all of our stuff, or for sleeping one person. It also converts into a bunk bed that will sleep two and sometimes even three. We have a little storage underneath either side of the bench. On one side we keep tools and on the other side we keep kitchen leftovers that we access occasionally. Directly underneath the bench is a cubby spot that is supposed to be for a compost toilet. We use it for shoes and our emergency poop shovel. We've got this poop shovel in case we have to have an emergency and poop outside, but generally we go to the bathroom at coffee shops in town. If it's too cold, too rainy, or too busy outside around us, I also have this handy dandy pee cup. I got this cup at the dollar store. I've never used this cup before, and if I'm not at a coffee shop, I will pee outside like a real lady. If you want a tutorial on all the details of the bathroom situation, I would be more than happy to make one for you. Moving over to the kitchen, we've got these awesome countertops built for us by Josh Glisson, founder of Dust City Wood Stickers. It used to have a built-in stove and a built-in fridge, but we gutted those in favor of no propane. We use the sink strictly for brushing our teeth. We just don't seem to need it for anything else. We don't have running water and truly haven't even desired running water since we started this lifestyle. We use four water containers. Above the sink is a two liter camelback that we use for brushing our teeth or rinsing things out. The gray water usually has nothing but earth friendly toothpaste in it, so it flows right out the back of the scamp and into the gravel. We have two two and a half gallon jugs under the bed for drinking water, and we have a six liter water bladder we keep in the car and fill up when we go to the store. Outside, we keep a one gallon bug sprayer full of water to clean dishes and occasionally shower if it's warm enough outside. We always keep a roll of toilet paper in the kitchen as well. This is a really interesting hack because it's cheaper than paper towels and it also creates a lot less waste than paper towels. We've installed a hanging rod underneath the upper storage from Ikea and this holds our silverware and our tiny stuff. We've got storage for dishes, tea supplies, and electronics above and a rudimentary shelving system for our food down below. And now the master bedroom. We've got two large, rarely accessed storage containers on either side of the bed. One we store our camping gear in, and the other we store electronics that don't work off the grid. Still plenty of storage in both of them. This whole area is made to adjust into a table with two benches. We use this area strictly as a bed because we use the area underneath for storage. We each have one bin for our clothes. These are wrapping paper bins that I ordered online. They fit perfectly together with our water jugs. Next to our bed, we have a closet. We hang a few clothes in the closet, but mostly use it for storage of other miscellaneous things that we access regularly. A few additional things we have are this sunroof. It's due for an upgrade. And we also have this really awesome screen door. So that's the tour of the inside. And this is how we live off grid. We've got a goal zero battery and solar panel. We use these to charge our phones, laptops, camera gear, and lights. And beyond that, we have no need for electricity. We cook on our wood burning BioLight stove. Otherwise we eat raw fruits, nuts, and veggies that we don't have to cook. Our lights are also from BioLight. They're battery operated. So all we have to do is charge them from our solar panel. Our heater is our only device connected to propane. It operates at the lowest level of gas that we could find. We crack the windows for cross ventilation, but CO2 is heavier than oxygen and flows down and out of our very unsealed door. Living in the scamp has been the best thing that I've ever done, and I think Baron has to agree. Even though we don't have the common luxuries of a regular house, we are riddled with so many less problems, so much less stress, so many fewer things to think about. If you have any specific questions or are looking for any kind of advice, please leave a comment below. Follow me on all of the rest of my social media accounts if you want to stay up to date with what I'm doing in the scamp and with my art. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.